Now let's summarize what we've talked about in the past set of videos. And we've said that the assignment operator does not establish equality. It's not the same as the equal sign you're familiar with from math class. To illustrate this, let's write the following. x is equal to 0. And that's kind of like what you would have seen in math class. And there's no surprise there. This sets the value of x to 0. But in Python and many other computer languages, we could write x is equal to x plus 1. And we've seen that this increments the value of x. Now to show that, let's use the print function and we'll make the first argument the string x equal and then the second argument will write the variable x and so when a variable or identifier is given as an argument to the print function the print function will display the value of that variable so hitting return now we see x is equal to 1 variables or values spring into existence when they appear on the left side of the assignment operator. And to help illustrate that, let's do something like this. Let's try to print high. And that's not the string high. That's an identifier, perhaps, high. Python's not going to know because we haven't assigned anything to high yet. So we get a name error and it says the name high is not defined. We have been, in all the assignments that we've done so far, assigned numeric values to the variables, but we could just as easily assign a string to a variable. So let's say that high is equal to hello world. And now if we try to print high, well, this should work just fine. And it does. We get the output of hello world. We also talked about how namespaces are used to map names to objects. And it turns out Python maintains various namespaces, but we won't get into that right now. We'll revisit this issue when we start writing our own functions. We talked about cascaded assignment where there are as many L values as there are assignment statements, but only one expression on the right. So as an example, we might write red is equal to green is equal to blue is equal to 255. So this is an example of cascaded assignment. We also talked about simultaneous assignment and it looks rather odd at first but it's a powerful construct and we showed how it could be used to swap two values but it could be used to swap any number of values and let's illustrate that so let's kind of use simultaneous assignment in a bad way at first let's say red green and blue those three L values a single assignment operator and let's assign these the values of 0 128 and let's go with 255 and this is simultaneous assignment so we're assigning the three values on the right to the three L values or the three names on the left and now just to see that we've succeeded in making this assignment let's write these three variables there and we get that they are 0 128 and 255. But now let's say that we want to put the green value into the red name or associated with the red name, the blue value associated with the green name, and the red value associated with the blue name. So we could write red, green, and blue. Just stick with those as before. But now we want green going into red. We want blue going into green and we want red to end up associated with the blue variable. So now I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut to recall that previous line that displayed the values. And sure enough, the values have rippled through these names. We talked about augmented assignment providing a shorthand for 
various expressions. So instead of having an expression where we have x is equal to x plus 1, and I had initialized x to 0, so if we look at x now, it's 1, we could write the augmented assignment operator plus equals 1 with the L value we're trying to increment on the left. And now if we look at x, it's equal to 2. We introduced a couple of new arithmetic operations. One was exponentiation, so we could take 6 and square it by writing double asterisk and then 2, the exponent. So that's a base of 6 raised to the power 2, and we get 36. We discuss the modulo or remainder operator. So if we write 17 percent sign, which is the modulo operator 4, so that's what is the remainder after we divide 4 into 17 an even number of times. So 4 times 4 is 16. We should get a remainder of 1. And sure enough, we do. And finally, we talked about the div mod function that gives the floor division and the modulo of the two arguments to the function. So maybe we have 1737 and 25. And when we hit return now, this says that 25 goes into 1737 69 times evenly. And then there's a remainder of 12. We also mentioned that div mod returns a tuple. There are two things in here. And we could use simultaneous assignment to get at those two individual values. And as an example of that, let's recall that function. I'll go back to the beginning of the line and say x comma y is equal to this div mod of 1737 comma 25. And now x is equal to that 69 and y is equal to 12.